In this lecture, I want to talk about a really important topic, and that is selecting your niche to write in. If you select the wrong niche, you'll end up blowing it. How would you select the wrong niche? How about selecting something you know absolutely nothing about and care absolutely nothing about? How about selecting a niche that has no traffic? How about selecting a niche that has so many books in it that you can't compete? So we're going to talk about selecting your niche here very quickly. I'm not an expert at this. You can probably find better courses and material on how to do this, but I'm going to give you a short introduction anyway. Now, the first suggestion that I would make is to write what you know. And in fact, I would go further than that in saying, write what you're passionate about. Readers are going to be able to recognize whether you have passion for what you're writing about or not. If you're really interested in it, it in what you're writing, it will come across in your writing. If you know what you're writing about, it'll save you a lot of research time and you can put in your own personal expertise into what you're writing. If you're a content expert, go for that content. I write about self-publishing and creating Udemy courses. So, you know, I write about what I know. But having said that, I've also kind of had this observation. Given the internet <laughs> and how much information there is out there, I feel that I can write about anything. In fact, I had a challenge with my wife. She grows African violets and she's very good at it. I've observed it. So I have a little bit of experience and I know nothing about it. But I've challenged her that I want to write a book on African violence because I can go out to the internet and find everything that I'm missing. Now, what are you doing? Are you just copying stuff off the internet? No. This is what I feel is the nonfiction writing process. When your writing is based on a lot of research and not a lot of personal experience, what you do is you go out and you find this information on the internet. Find multiple sources so that you're not quoting just one person or getting information from just one person. And then you rephrase, you paraphrase, you summarize, you condense, enhance, extend, and personalize with your own personal experience. That's right. I put together an acronym for this process, which is RIPSCAPEEP. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, I had to do that. So this is the idea. You can write about anything. The internet is a huge treasure trove of information, but you don't just copy, in other words, what is known as plagiarize information. What you do is you absorb it, you read it, then you go and you put it in your own words, you condense it and summarize it, you extend it with additional information and enhance it, and then you personalize it with your own personal information, and voila, you've taken what you learned off the internet and you've made it your own book. Now, if that wasn't enough, I wanted to talk about the nonfiction book topics that I'm hoping to cover in this series. What about writing biographies and memoirs? Now, notice that each of these styles or types of nonfiction book has its emphasis and requirements. Biographies and memoirs are going to be maybe uh, actually interviews with living people or going through papers that people have or uh, books about people. Technical guides, that's going to be learning software and figuring out the best way to use it. Business and finance is very similar. Historical accounts. You're going to read a lot of stuff on history, and then you're going to paraphrase, summarize, condense, and personalize that information into your own. Cooking, art, and photography. This is the ultimate in personal experience type of nonfiction writing. Self-help and motivation is very popular nowadays, and so is health and fitness. If these topics interest you and you have passion. So what is the topic selection goal? 
Here's what I would recommend. Write about something you know. Write about something you're passionate about. And then I would put these qualifications on it. Write about a topic that will generate enough traffic. Write about a topic in which you can compete. How do you validate or review or gather any information on these last two topics? Right? You know what you know and you know what you're passionate about, but you don't know what's going to generate traffic and you don't know where you can compete. So you jump over to Amazon and you start entering sample search terms. Here's an example from Amazon where I entered photography. One of the things you're going to find is that short root keywords that you're going at that you're going after are going to be very popular and hard to compete in. What you want is what are known as long tail keywords, where you get more specific about your topic. This is a very general topic, photography. And look at this. The first book that you have to compete against has four and a half stars at 7,663 reviews. You're not going to compete in this category. Photography is too general. But what if you got more specific? I started typing in photography, and one of the things that Amazon does when you type in the search box is that it drops down a list of suggestions. Those are usually longer tail keywords. So pick one of the longer suggestions. For instance, rather than just doing photography, what about going after natural light portrait photography? That's getting pretty specific. And if you enter this search keyword, look at the number one non-sponsored result has two reviews. The number two has one review. This is a niche that you can compete in. But the question becomes, does it have enough traffic? Probably not. You can probably win and compete and own this a keyword as this individual, Rich Prue, has done. But are you ever going to get any sales? Is there enough traffic? You need to balance the two. What you need to find is something that's in the middle. I would say that competing against a book that has 7,663 reviews is a little tough. Competing against a book that has two reviews is a little too soft. So get something in the middle. Get books with eh, 20, 30 reviews, that kind of you know, light competition, but something that you can compete in. And that is a niche that you can go at. So I feel like I need to summarize. Pick something you're interested in. Pick something you're potentially even passionate about. Then go over to Amazon and start entering some search keywords. Type them in, and before you press enter, notice the expansions or the search suggestions that Amazon is giving you. Look for one of the long ones. It's maybe getting a little more specific toward what you want to teach. Then enter it. See if you get, see if you get books that maybe have 20 reviews, maybe in that category, short of 20. So they have a few reviews, but you can probably compete. I wouldn't go after something where you just have a few books that have one or two reviews. That indicates a lack of traffic. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about another complicating factor. And that is that you should always write in a series so that you can sell the next book to your readers. This turns your single book into a series of books. I'll see you in that lecture.